Thank you. The next item of business is topical questions, and we start with question number one from Liam Kerr. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the National Strategic Assessment of Serious and Organised Crime 2018. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. Uh, the Scottish Government welcomes the publication of the National Crime Agency's Strategic Assessment of Serious and Organised Crime 2018. The assessment presents a high-level picture of serious organised crime in the United Kingdom and contains a specific section on Scotland, which draws on information largely provided by Police Scotland. Police Scotland has primacy for serious organised crime in Scotland and constantly assesses emerging and existing threats. It does so in collaboration with all law enforcement agencies based at the Scottish Crime Campus at Gapcosh. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Presiding officer, the Scottish section of this report, referred to by the Cabinet Secretary, co-authored by the National Crime Agency and Police Scotland, is very clear. The threat from organised crime gangs is increasing in Scotland. And not only is the threat from these gangs increasing, it is diversifying into new forms of activity. The report highlights ongoing feuds, violence and firearms incidents, particularly in the Central Belt. So does the Cabinet Secretary think this is good enough? Cabinet Secretary. Well, officer, the information which is contained within the report is actually uh, intelligence and information which is provided by Police Scotland uh, to the National uh, Crime Agency on these matters. It is correct to say that there are a number of, um, uh, a small number of organised crime groups in uh, Scotland that are presently uh, undertaking a feud, which has uh, resulted in uh, some serious gang-related violence, uh, which we have seen on, uh, in public spaces within uh, Scotland, particularly within the Glasgow area, which is wholly unacceptable. Uh, what I can say to uh, members in the chamber today is that Police Scotland are doing everything possible to reduce the risk um, to the public from uh, targeted acts of violence that take place within uh, public places. Although I'm sure members will recognise that it would not be appropriate for me to set out in detail the specific nature of the work which has been taken forward by Police Scotland on these matters. They are operational matters for Police Scotland, uh, but I'm briefed on these matters on a regular basis by senior officers from at Police Scotland and those from their organised crime and counter-terrorism uh, unit. But members can be assured that these are issues which are taken very seriously by Police Scotland uh, and they are determined to make sure that the actions of this small number of feud and crime groups is dealt with appropriately and they have a trail of action which are taking place in order to deal with it effectively. Liam Kerr. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. But the Cabinet Secretary avoided saying whether he thinks it is good enough. I'll tell him what the public thinks. It is not. So will he be analysing and reporting back which part of the government's strategy to tackle organised crime has failed and why? And the report also revealed that not only do criminals have ready access to firearms, but they are willing to use them in public places. So what action will be taken in response to this news and how will progress be monitored? Put simply, how is he going to get the guns off our streets? Uh, I, I appreciate the, the member's interest in this matter, but he fundamentally misunderstands how these matters are actually addressed by the police and law enforcement agencies in Scotland. The Caesar Organised Crime Strategy is a joint strategy, a multi-agency strategy, which is Scottish Government, Police Scotland, other crime, a, a crime enforcement agencies, uh, enforcement agencies at the Crown Office, uh, and a whole range of public and private sector organisations that collectively come together in order to tackle serious and organised crimes in a whole range of different areas uh, within uh, Scotland. Uh, so, for example, uh, the work that they do in Divert in order to prevent people from getting involved in it is extremely important and is taken forward by a range of agencies. The uh, Deter Strand, which is taken forward again by a range of different strat agencies, helps to deter people from getting involved in it. And also the disrupt elements, which are taken forward largely by our law enforcement agencies, are extremely important. The information which is contained in the assessment made by the NCA is information provided by Police Scotland. This is not new information. This information feeds into the actual national strategy you have here in Scotland to deal with it. And one of the things that's very evident from the creation of a single police force is the coordinated action we're now able to take in addressing serious and organised crime. But as I've mentioned, uh, the spilling out of the feud of some of these uh, organised crime groups onto the streets of some parts of Scotland is wholly unacceptable. But I can assure the member is that Police Scotland take these matters very seriously and take robust action in order to deal with these matters. But the information contained within the NCA report is not new information. It is Police Scotland information that forms that, and they're key to the delivery of the strategy in tackling these matters. Daniel Johnson. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the report talks about serious organised crime working across borders, specifically mentioning the ports of Loch Ryan and Cairn Ryan, and also highlighting significant connections between gangs in the northwest of England. So, given this, uh, can I ask uh, the, the Minister what work Police Scotland and indeed the Scottish Government are undertaking to work with the Home Office and police colleagues throughout the UK to ensure that intelligence is shared and activity coordinated? Uh, member raises a very important point because there is an issue in terms of how these serious and organised crime groups operate and very often they don't recognise uh, any type of uh, uh, boundaries between uh, different countries, uh, including coming from Northern Ireland and also um, uh, from south of the border. A key part of the work which Police Scotland take forward is sharing information and intelligence with other law enforcement agencies within the UK. Uh, and also internationally in order to deal with these matters. Uh, and the teams at Gart Kosh and the Organised Crime and, and Counterterrorism Unit are responsible for taking forward those measures and sharing that information as and when that's appropriate. Uh, the member will also be aware recently of the uh, success of Oper Operation Escalade uh, that resulted in a number of very significant nominals from organised crime groups uh, based here in Scotland uh, being uh, convicted and giving, uh, very, given very lengthy uh, prison sentences. A key part of the work that they took forward in dealing with these matters is uh, sharing appropriate information and intelligence with other law enforcement agents to help to support them in taking forward that work. So that work goes on on an ongoing basis and having the crime campus at Gart Kosh has provided that central hub that allows a range of different agencies, some 18 different agencies, uh, Scottish and UK and international agencies to work in a collaborative fashion to tackle these matters effectively here in Scotland. Rona Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary um, agree with me that it's essential Police Scotland remain able to utilise the European ar arrest warrant to combat these crimes effectively? Cabinet Secretary. I'll sign Officer, that builds on very well with the point which has been raised by Daniel Johnson. That is the need to make sure that we can share intelligence and information as and when it's appropriate because these organised crime groups do not recognise uh, domestic or international uh, boundaries in perpetrating their crime and the European arrest warrant is absolutely critical in helping to support that work. The loss of the European arrest warrant could significantly hamper our ability to tackle serious and organised crime here in Scotland and it's still not clear in any shape or fashion as to how the UK government intend to address that issue in the Brexit discussions. Alongside that, the work that we undertake with Europol, which is a sharing of intelligence through different police agencies, is it critical as well and being able to track individuals who are involved in organised crime and the loss of access to that type of intelligence, again, will compromise Scotland's ability to tackle these matters. And as yet, we have no clarity from the UK government on how these types of issues are going to be addressed. So the European Arrest Warrant, Europol, all play a very important part in helping to support us in addressing serious and organised crime here in Scotland. But to date, it's unclear how the UK government are going to address these issues once we have left the European Union. And in my view, that potentially compromises our ability to tackle serious and organised crime here in Scotland as effectively as we are at the present moment. Question number two, Claudia Beamish. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether powers devolved to the Parliament over onshore oil and gas licensing under the Scotland Act 2016, which commenced in February, give ministers the authority to take decisions on granting and extending petroleum exploration and development licences for onshore fracking. Minister Paul Guilos. Uh, the Scottish Government welcomes the devolution of, powers, of the powers on February 9, 2018 uh, to issue and manage onshore oil and gas licences uh, to Scotland. The powers transferred to Scotland through sections 47 to 49 of the Scotland Act 2016 and related subordinate legislation provide Scottish ministers with a wide range of powers over the administration of onshore oil and gas licences, including the granting of or extension of uh, petroleum exploration and development licences. Uh, I thank the Minister for that response. And uh, will the Minister uh, be able to seek to ensure that the initial term of pedal licence 162, owned by Ineos and Reach CSG, which covers 400 square kilometres of the Scottish Central Belt, will not be extended, and this licence will cease on the 30th of June this year. And what is the process by which the licence will be considered? Yes. Um, well, I hope Ms Beamish will understand, if, I, I don't want to prejudge any, any application that we made to ministers in the same way as the integrity of the planning system is very important. We've only just received these powers. 
Uh, any request for extensions uh, to a licence would be taken on a case-by-case -case basis in regard to our policies in place at the time. Uh, but I want to reassure the member these are matters that we, we take of great seriousness and we will be taking forward our, our plans to develop a, a framework around onshore oil and gas licensing. Claudia Buish. I, I thank the Minister for that further answer. And I wonder if the Minister could um, clarify for the Chamber and those um, in communities across Scotland who have concerns about onshore fracking, um, whether the Scottish Government now holds powers to revoke a licence or whether that remains with the UK Government. Thank you. Minister. I uh, re 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 return to the previous answer I gave to Claudia Beamish, which is to state that um, we do have, uh, we're grateful for the, uh, the, the uh, quickness of the uh, devolution of powers following the statement in Parliament in October last year received uh, commencement of the powers on February the 9th. We do now have the powers, uh, including granting of or extension of petroleum exploration development license or indeed to, to uh, uh, refuse to extend if, if need be. Um, but uh, I wouldn't want to discuss any specific license at this point. I hope uh, Ms Beamish understands. I don't want to uh, undermine the, uh, an impartial and clear transparent process that we would hope to deploy. Ivan McKee. Uh, thank you. When it comes to meeting our energy needs, does the minister share my view that this parliament's focus should be on the importance of the renewable sector and regrettably that the UK government has failed to provide this vital sector with the support it requires. Very, very briefly, that's hardly to the point. I, I, I would agree with that. I would say that uh, in the past, perhaps there has been too much focus on, on fracking at UK level and uh, we have encouraged UK ministers to take a greater interest and support for renewable industries. I had a recent meeting with Claire Perry in the All Energy Conference in Glasgow and uh, I have reason to, to believe that uh, Claire Perry is more progressive than perhaps some of her predecessors, so I hope that we will have more fruitful ground. But I take on board the, the member's point. I very much agree with him that renewables is the way to go and uh, that we should bring our energy into making sure that we have a low carbon future in Scotland. Mark Ruskell. Thank you. It's now been almost four years since the public inquiry concluded into the UK's first commercial planning application for coal bed methane near Earth. The decision still sits in limbo on the planning minister's desk. So isn't it time that the Scottish Government gave communities the certainty they deserve using the legally watertight planning powers that they have now and shut the gate on Ineos in the Forth Valley? Uh, the Minister will be aware there's a live court issue in this. So just be careful in responding. In, in, indeed, Presiding Officer. I, I, in any case, I can say only a limited amount in this that uh, the appeals remain sisted and it is a matter for the DPAA uh, to decide what the next step should be in each case. Thank you very much. And Angus MacDonald. Thanks, President Officer. I recall in his statement to Parliament on October the 3rd last year, the Minister made clear that the Scottish Government's preferred position was subject to the completion of a strategic environmental assessment. Will the Minister update Parliament on that process and will the Minister confirm that he will update Parliament following the completion of the strategic environmental assessment and any BRIA that's undertaken? Yes. Uh, the, the member makes a very good point. Uh, we are embarked upon a strategic environmental assessment, which is a requirement of the uh, 2005 Act. And uh, we are, as I set out in my statement, uh, that has commenced. We expect that uh, strategic environmental assessment to conclude in the summer. And uh, we would undertake any other st uh, statutory requirements in reaching our, our preferred position. And that's all I can really say at this stage. <coughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister and members. That concludes topical questions.